electric cars are not a new thing, as they were part of the early days of the automobile. The early cars that were filled with dino juice were not as convenient as they are now. For example, before you could start your journey, you had to literally crank up your car. This changed when electric cars were introduced and the pros of the combustion engine started to pile up, and electric cars were forgotten for a long time. The resurrection of EVs began when people started to figure out that the pollution caused by the traffic is starting to show some negative effects. If you were an environmentalist in the 2000s, but thought that walking and public transportation are for the poor people, your best options were mostly hybrids, as EVs at the time were mostly a niche product. But things started to change in 2012, when Tesla launched the Model S, a car that we can thank for paving the road for the current EV boom. Although the common image of EVs has drastically improved over the years, they still get a lot of pushback, and the people that oppose EVs are really vocal about it. By going through the comments of a post about an EV, you quickly learn the talking points of those who oppose them, and they can be summarized. Range? Bad. Charging time? Bad. Battery production? Bad. Sometimes the criticism that EVs get is valid, but sometimes it is so dumb that it hurts my brain. Mostly, this happens with the range discussion, going like this. With an electric car, you can drive 1000 km in one go, with all your earthly possessions in a trailer. And while this may be true, these people don't realize that for most people, this is not necessary. Often, the hate on electric cars is aimed towards one certain car manufacturer, that is often thought to be the electric car. And it doesn't help that the build quality of said brand is notoriously bad. So with enough mental gymnastics, you make it the picture that all electric cars are bad. But are they bad? Well, in the case of Tesla, sure, they've had some quality issues, but you really can't achieve what they have by making shit cars. In addition, for normal people, electric cars do offer some benefits when compared to their ICE counterparts, like the silence, ease of driving, and all sorts of technical gimmicks. EVs are also quite simple machines, as they do not have many moving parts. Of course, car guys will bitch about the fact that you can't actually tinker EVs as much as ICEs. But regular people don't really do car maintenance themselves, as ICEs are starting to be more and more complicated due to tightening regulations. And I think that this is one of the reasons why some people oppose EVs with such a passion because EVs are threatening their lifestyle. But standing in the front of profession because of this is silly, because you can just look at horses. Back in the day, we used them to go from place A to place B, and now they are mostly in recreational use. This is most likely going to happen to ICEs at some point. And speaking of the EV manufacturers, they were starting to make waves in the stock market. After the success of Tesla in the stock exchange, new car manufacturers started to go public, and things went insane. Since the automobile industry was on the brink of a revolution, many people saw an opening in the markets. And because of the monetary policies at the time, there was a lot of loose cash. So if you had an idea and some rendering skills, your company could be worth billions of dollars. People tried to reason the insane valuations with the following phrase. You need to value these companies like tech companies, not car companies. And what they meant by this is that the profits of those companies are in the future. Of course, there is a truth in it, as you can't make a profitable car company from the get-go. But you do have to realize that the car industry isn't the easiest one to break through. Sure, you can make a concept car, and if you know what you are doing, you might be able to make small production runs. But to make a model into mass production, well, that is in another ballpark. Let's do a little comparison, so that we can get some perspective. The market cap of Canoe was around 7 billion dollars at its peak. That is more than for example Mazda or Mitsubishi, even though Canoe at the time hadn't produced any vehicles to sell. Another example of this is Nikola. Right out of the gate, they were valued at 13 billion dollars, at the same time as their profits were in the tens of thousands. And that money wasn't generated by selling vehicles. The valuation of these companies have slightly come down after the golden days. But what about Tesla? 
Well, they are starting to show that the insane valuations that they got may actually widen the money. While other car manufacturers are struggling to get their EVs profitable, Tesla is selling its cars with insane margins. And it also helps that they have pioneered ways to pump cash out of you, even after you have purchased the car. But how about environmental friendliness? Will you be a better person if you purchase an EV instead of ICE? Well, there are two types of emissions that are usually compared between these two, during use and during manufacturing. During use emissions are easy to compare. ICEs have them, EVs have not. Some people say that this really doesn't matter because they think that the emissions for EVs are produced in the energy production or in the manufacturing. So the lack of pollution during use is meaningless. It might be that those people haven't heard about the thing called smog. But sure, if you live in the middle of nowhere, a few combustion engines here and there doesn't ruin your air quality. And thus, the emissionless EVs are not that big of a deal. But nevertheless, you shouldn't smoke signal your small dick energy. But what about the manufacturing? Well, the big thing weighing EVs down is the battery. To build a battery, you need rare metals like lithium, cobalt and nickel. And extracting said minerals from earth is not the greenest thing you can do. However, the recycling of batteries via hydrometallurgy is starting to be more common, capacity of these facilities being the current limiting factor. But the big question is, which one is actually better for the environment? EVs or traditional cars? Well, it depends who you ask, but the majority will say that EVs are the better option. There are comparisons that take into consideration as much of the car's life cycle as possible, like the study done by Volvo. And the results show that EV is a better option than ICE. But from the environmental point of view, this comparison is pretty much pointless. Because what you use to power your car is not the problem. It's the car. Powering your car with green energy doesn't change the fact that it is not energy efficient for every individual to move around into a personal piece of metal and plastic. The nice thing is though, that we already have a solution for this problem. Public transportation. Implementing this solution is somewhat problematic, especially in countries where predefined routes that other people also use is seen as some socialist bullshit. <laughs>